FlossTube, it's Chrissy, finally a farm girl. This is my 60th FlossTube. It is Sunday, September 11th, uh, 2022, and I am happy to be sitting here with you after another week. Um, if you are new to my channel, welcome. If you uh, have been with me through all 60 possibly floss tubes, I, I, I just absolutely am so thankful for uh, the fact that you, you watch and um, you come back and we share our time together. It certainly has changed um, and I have grown over the last 60 floss tube episodes. Uh, that is for sure. Um, not only learning, uh, meeting people, learning about technical things, learning about stitchy things. Floss tube brings just a, a gamut of, um, of blessings and some of the very small negatives are exactly that. They are very small in comparison to what um, you get back. So thank you so much for all the, the great comments last week. I was particularly um, happy that the three words that I was, you know, sharing with you, the but if not, um, spoke to several of you. And, that, and that's, that's just to me, that's the, the cherry on top of everything. Um, when something that I share from my past or my own personal experience in life can affect somebody else. And, um, you know, I, I just am so happy and pleased with that. So, okay, episode 60. Um, if, if you aren't subscribed, uh, you know, this is a great place for me to ask for you to double check. Make sure you're subscribed. I have a fun giveaway for today just to celebrate 60 episodes. Two um, very special things from Fat Quarter Shop, and I held on to them um, to have for you today. So, if you could just double check, I will share the winner of last week's floss tube at the very end. And um, this week, you know, this is just one of those things that if you could make sure that you're a subscriber, I believe you have to be on public in order for me to see you. So just do all the things, check all the, the, the bells, um, you know, hit like below and let's move on and let's get going into what my week was like. I always share with you, I try to share with you what my week was like and what we did. And I will say that as I left you last time, uh, Labor Day approached and we, we really were very relaxed. Um, you know, for the most part, we don't have anybody at home but Philip. So we ran up to Joanne's and just enjoyed the time together with my husband, Randy, and I was able to get a ribbon organizer. Since I've been doing a lot more finishing than I ever have in my stitching, you know, journey, my ribbons were getting, they were everywhere. I had Halloween here, Christmas there, in little boxes. It, it just, it was getting to the point where I needed something that I could keep things organized and Joann's had uh, my first, my first piece of, um, you know, equipment, I will say. It's just a nice white piece that has spools on it. Um, not spools, but like dowel rods. And it was on sale. So that was my first two weeks of, or first two days of what I did last, this week. Boy, I need to stop for a second and regroup. <laughs> I'm forgetting my words. Anyways. So back to Labor Day. We shopped, we enjoyed, we relaxed, and then we grilled uh, and had my dad over for dinner. And so that was that was really nice. Um, and then Tuesday, I played. I played in my ribbons, I played in my rickrack, and I, I spent as much of the day first gathering everything and then trying to decide, because you, you only have so much room, and some ribbons are you know bigger than others. So trying to work out what would work best and uh, I will share a picture of that with you at the end of the video um, and so that you can see it and I, I'm, I'm really tickled I'm really tickled and I'm really pleased I think it was $29 and I got it for 30% off and it's just a good way for me to get started so that was Tuesday Wednesday was 
the StitchCon sign up deadline for 2023 and what a crazy day. Um, one, I can't imagine it for keepsakes. And by the way, keepsakes has, uh, the cross stitch store keepsakes are, Barbara, the owner, ha, is the one that puts on StitchCon. And she has her own shop keepsakes, just in case for some reason you just aren't aware. And they have a new website. Um, Linda shared with me real quick and then I jumped on it that they have refreshed and what a beautiful website it is sharing all the workers and um, so if you get a chance I would you know go 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 look at it and check it out it's just you know you, you, to me having gone to StitchCon now for last or this year for my first time um, it's just to me she's just the staff there is is excellent and they're caring and I, they just truly, I think, want you happy and they want your experience to be happy, even, whether it's at their shop or whether it's um, when you're at StitchCon. So anyways, yes, I, I, I made it on the StitchCon wait list. Linda made it on. My friend Jennifer um, Sweet Chaos Stitcher, Jessica Sweetwater Stitcher, all the Jacksonville ladies made it on. Um, Elaine, a friend of uh, mine that I've met before at a retreat, Elaine Hill made it on. I mean, there's just a, a huge, huge gamut of Floridians that made it on the StitchCon wait list. And now we wait. Um, and yes, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to wait, but at the same time, you know, it, it's, we've done our first part and checked our first box. So, uh, it's going to be exciting. That's for sure. Okay. And then I will say that, um, that after, same afternoon, Linda drove down and she was already going into uh, work that day and so she drove down and we had lunch together and she dropped off Miss Jenny um, and I will go into that a little bit later some of you might be able to see her behind me I start I really was feeling like I wanted to organize and I was really feeling out of control with some of my model stitches and I needed to start housing them and finding a way where I could keep them together and so that's kind of what I worked on. It was kind of a really nice organizational type relaxing week because I love to do that. Um, and so she came down for lunch and then I went and did dinner at dad's. And that is what I typically do if you're new here. Every Wednesday, I go down to my dad's who lives in my community. It's two, mile, two miles to his house. I think it's 2.1 and we do dinner in a movie or dinner in a show or sometimes it's just dinner and conversation. So um, this week I, I went down to my dad's and uh, I stitched on a, um, I'll share it with you in just a little bit of my Christmas Lizzie Kate. And I, I have decided um, that Prairie Schoolers and Lizzie Kates are going to be what I just consistently take to my dad's to stitch on Wednesdays. It is the perfect stitch for me to sit and still be able to talk and have conversation and not lose my place. So um, anyways, that was Wednesday. Okay, and then if we wanna really, I touched based on some of the little things, and then I will say that this, this week um, was absolutely world, um, world changing uh, with the Queen's passing. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but I will say one word, and that's just legacy. Um, you know, wow, what, what a legacy that she leaves behind and isn't that just shouldn't that just all be our goal um to just have that um maybe not to the magnitude but just to the to to be the woman that we know that you know god wants us to be so that was uh hit hit hard to many and you know i do lift up you know my prayers for for those that are just mourning her loss in a significant in a way and especially her family um, world changing and in some ways I'm, I'm glad to be here I'm glad to be part of it I'm glad that this is part of my history um, while I'm here and the other one was today is actually the 21st anniversary of 9-11 um, and just like so so many others I do know exactly where I was what I was doing 
Um, I know I was pregnant with my daughter Olivia, I know Philip was a year old, and I know my daughter Heather was in elementary school. And I know it was the first time I ever wondered about feeling fearful of, of being a parent in this generation. Um, and wanting so badly to never ever have to think about their safety um, and so I found myself getting a call uh, and re over the news knowing I needed to go get in car line the car line was so long um, but needed to get her out of school and just feeling so relieved when I got my car home and the kids all inside and just them near me and and then I think we all felt very similar um, and so yeah just a couple of things this week that were just absolutely world-changing and um, you can't go by and not acknowledge that so moving on okay um, yeah so 60 60 episodes still crazy to me um, who did I watch this week? I really enjoy the Sable Stitchers and I love the two of them together. It it just brought a different element adding in the two together and so I really had a good time watching the Sable Stitchers. I will say I did not watch as much floss tube and I have some catching up to do tonight. Um, luckily football is back in my husband's world and therefore um, he could watch it all day Sunday, all night Sunday, on to Monday. And so Floss Tube, I am coming back. And, um, you know, I will be able to get caught up pretty quickly. Okay, let's see. I watched Annabella's. And I watched Annabella, uh, Elaine, sitting with Stitching Grammy. And so I just have to say, Stitching Grammy's project bags that she gifted and that she shared. Um, I do not have any of her bags. However, they are really, really nice. Um, I was so impressed with, I, I would like to try one of the, her flannel floss um, extras that you could put in your project bag to keep your little orts and things like that. Well, maybe not the ort that you're throwing away, but your floss um, that's extra and it's flannel. And I loved the fact that she has a little um, symbol, she has a charm that she adds to everyone that is an angel. And I just thought that was a really sweet thing, a sweet story, and I had not known that before until I watched it, watched her on Annabella share that. So um, that'll be in my future haul one day is grabbing one of her bags. Okay, um, I think we could go ahead. I, I really seriously did more finishing, I think, this week, which is still sewing, than I did of actual whip stitching. So I'm gonna go ahead and from from now we're just gonna we're just gonna roll with it. Um, I had a lot of fun finishing up a finish I had started and a finish that Linda had started. I do not have my haul from Expo yet. That'll be in my plans this week is to take a run up to Brick City. It made no sense to go up there when I knew I was gonna have a couple of new releases as well as um, the models that I want to take up there. So I wanted to get organized, but let me go ahead and share with you. If any of you have been following for a while, you'll know that I introduced um, Jeremiah and then Jeremiah, Wizard Jeremiah, and the cute little story where Stitchy Linda and I got laughing and, and talking about a song and I, I was gonna do a frog and I'm like, what is his name gonna be? And she said, you know, Jeremiah and the song just hit and Philip, the reason I come to love Jeremiah so much is really the story. And Philip listens to music every morning, every morning. Um, while we're having coffee, then as soon as he's watched a little bit of, on his tablet, he literally reaches for his, um, our Alexa and goes from there. And so, he listened to Jeremiah Was a Bullfrog probably 10 to 15 times that day over and over. And I mean, it's a great song. And so out of that came Jeremiah, the first pattern. And of course, getting to know Jeremiah that, you know, the way that I have, he, he mentioned his first 
getting to know somebody and they've been texting and then after that she shared a selfie with him um, and so therefore I had to design something so you could see and so I have um, Miss Jenny with me today and I absolutely adore this um, and one I cannot thank Linda enough she did the model stitch for Jeremiah and she did the model stitch for Miss Jenny Miss Jenny I can see now why Jeremiah is just got a crush on her. She is a true Southern Belle, and you can tell she's a little bit country and a little bit city girl, but let me pull her out of here. And I wanted to finish Miss Jenny, who is now available in my Etsy shop. Um, she'll be available on Fat Quarter Shop soon. And um, anyways, but I mean, geez, how do you not smile and look at those blue eyes? I know now why Jeremiah told me that he was really smitten. So I love the fact that she reads and I love the fact that she stitches. I love the fact that she has her little friend with her, Miss Matilda. And as far as what makes it so good to me, Oh my gosh, the eyes. I thought to myself, how am I gonna get the same thing but to have her look like a girl? Well, the eyelashes and the blue eyes and she's got little kissy pink lips. Okay, now I love the fact I did design her to have white in here. However, uh, Linda and I both agreed that She's um, fancy enough that she likes her pearls and she likes, so we have the white beads that are on here and here and one in her bow. Um, so this is Miss Jenny. And I finished her just with some, the not bright red gingham, but the burgundy red gingham. Actually, it's not getting them because the check is much smaller, but anyways. And then I used this trim here for the back. So, uh, this is grits. Um, I tried, we tried to, you know, obviously this is the same dyed floss from Weeks. And I'm just really pleased. And I'm, I'm excited that he, he has officially asked her out and they are going to have their first date. Um, so, now, I'll show you the difference in sizes here. I love this little cabinet. I got this little cabinet half off at Hobby Lobby, and I wanted a place to house them and uh, actually see if this would be something that um, Jean of, at Brick City, my local needle workshop, Jean, the owner, has had, she's got Wizard Jeremiah right now, but, I wanted a place for these two to, to be together and and then to be able to maybe add. So anyways, this is Jeremiah original. Wizard Jeremiah is at the shop. And this is, now look at the difference in the sizes of the pillow. I am not really sure why, because it's the same count fabric. Uh, both are stitched on a 32 count. She is stitched on vintage country mocha the back side, the non-modeled side. And I love that. I love stitching with that. So she's they're the identical same size as far as stitch count and everything. Um, as far as, but it's just funny. The pillow worked out smaller. So they do look good together, don't they? Okay. So this was my first release this week was, um, or one of my releases this week, I was only going to do one. And my husband worked so hard helping me out with this. Um, I could not do this without him. And he had already put together, knowing I had the two, he had already put together the flyer that goes out to the shops announcing um, new releases. If you wanna see my hard copy patterns, um, you can just ask your, your local LNS um, I'd be happy to, to work with them, but he helps me with that. And so he had already put both in and who am I to ask him to say, no, let's do one a week when he'd already done the work. Um, so 
I'll put that down here. And then while I'm back here, there you go. I had to share what I found at TJ Maxx. Now, I gotta tell you, I'm not a frog person. I never was. I never was till now. Ooh. Um, but I am finding a new um a new love for frogs in their own way. And I thought this was so cute. So this was at TJ Maxx. And I thought it would be so cool to be with uh, Wizard Jeremiah and some of my other Halloween um, decor. So this is the back. Check this out. Like, so cute. So um, I really, yeah, wouldn't that be a great, wouldn't this be a great cross-stitch design? I mean, if you don't love frogs, I get it, but how cute. Okay, so that was the first uh, one that I, that I finished, fully finished, on Wednesday um, when she dropped it off and she's just she's just too cute and I love he hearing how people get a kick out of Jeremiah's stories and his texts and things like that then okay let me do this the Target dollar spot Jennifer sweet chaos stitcher well, first of all she finished my Beulah so cool if you do not follow Jennifer sweet chaos stitcher all one word on Instagram. Y you need to I am I Don't want to say proud But at the same time I really am I mean for somebody who is a relatively new to the stitching community and I mean like floss tube and all the terms and LNS and what's out there she just dove in and no fear and she's finishing things and she's finished she did a flat with Beulah and um, oh my gosh, you need to go follow her and you need to go check out her Beulah finish because it's so good. Um, I'm just, it's just really good. And I, I just, I enjoy just having her um, be part of our, our stitching community in Florida, let alone, you know, on Instagram and, and on floss tube. And, you know, maybe one day she needs her own floss tube because she's just, She's got, she's just doing so good. So I, I am really proud of, of that. Um, so she mentioned to me that she went to the Target dollar spot and she found this couple of things. I had to go get it, of course. But while I was there, I ended up with, a, I shared with you that I'm trying to get my stitches, model stitches organized so that if they're at a shop or if there's a place to put them and they have a place to sit, so I found, whoa, sorry. Okay, I found this. This was five bucks and I absolutely thought, okay, one of them, something will work and I was kind of thinking Matilda and so far I've got, it's working out. So you have original Matilda that was my first stitch my first design of matilda that i used on my first retreat bag where i dangled one of those and that was for um and then this was the one the next one this is matilda sews and this is the one that i took up to stitch con because chris leedy of uh she's chris cross stitch she did this on her embroidery machine and so i immediately use that for my retreat bag when I went up to StitchCon. Okay, and we've got Matilda Bruise. That's over on the Halloween, but just these these everyday type Matildas, this is where they're, wor that seems to be working out. And I put a little measuring tape, the ribbon. I got one of my little, I made this for that one retreat. Let me get it out of here. Those little miniatures. So I just stuck that in there. Okay. And what did I make this week or what did I put out on my Etsy shop design wise is my Matilda goes to school. So let me get her out and let me put this down. Okay, this is Matilda goes to school. And so 
Miss Matilda is your teacher. And you've got your school, schoolhouse clock, another little mouse, two of my students, a boy and a girl. I added, it's, it's charted if you don't want it, but I did add a little red bow. Uh, that's just Matilda. This is the first time Matilda has shoes and an actual dress and clothes. She has a ruler in her hand, and even though you can't see it, there's two pieces of chalk on the chalk ledge. Of course, the flag. And what better teacher chair than a spool of thread? So here's, here's why I love this so much, is because for, for the, the majority of my working career, as far as professionally, I was a paralegal. I worked at an asbestos law firm in downtown Birmingham, Michigan for a good chunk of it. I started at Aetna in Troy, uh, learned, trained, moved my way up, and then I went to a plaintiff firm who dealt with asbestosis and mesothelioma, and I worked for um, that firm for a good while, and I really, really loved it. Um, so a paralegal was something I did not expect in my life. Um, I'm not sure what I thought I was gonna be. I, I wanted to be a teacher for a really long time. Um, but somehow I find my, found myself when I needed a job. I had found um, a law firm, Aetna, that was looking, that had benefits, and it was the perfect starting professional type career for me, um, and it worked great. And then, but I never lost my love for, for kids and school and teaching and things like that. Um, later on, just zoom forward, and when Philip was born, and then later on, about a year, so you know, we knew he had special needs. And at three, he went into the pre K ESE program. And once he was finished with that, um, he was going to go into kindergarten. And I just wanted to be there at school with him. I wanted, it was really hard for me to let that day come. And so, knowing that, I thought I could put find a way to work in a school district and at the same school and so that all played out and um, the first year I worked in a, a TMH classroom and I've worked in a variety after that so I worked in two self-contained classrooms and then I uh, also then worked in the kitchen one year so that I could get off when he got off at noon um, you know you do what you do to, to make it work um, and to, to me that was that was just the best thing I could do I could get off from serving lunch with the kids and I could jump in my car and I could get in car line and pick him up um, and then I was also there when my daughter Heather was at school so it really worked out good um, then Philip needed to go into his own self-contained classroom and um, it was first grade and he was with this amazing teacher, Miss Mezzerano. Um, and I was able to get a job as a one-on-one -on -one paraprofessional. And um, I worked in a first grade classroom and I became close friends with the teacher. I became good, you know, it, it, was, a, it was a good balance. I was right down the hall from where Philip was. My daughter, Olivia, started kindergarten there everything was my whole world was close to me and then we all got in the car at the end of the day and went home and it was perfect um it was perfect until philip had his first grand mal seizure at school and that was that was a change and it's just like what we deal with with 9 11. it alters you it changes you um and you have to hold on to that hope that God gives us to cope with what you're moving through. So, this one is not to be about sad, but it is to be about the story behind why, what I think is so special about your school journey, why I wanted to donate the money for that child's first day to school. I wanted to also design something that was sweet and um, happy of when we remember either for our kids when they went to school, uh, whether you went to the back to school shopping or whether you are a teacher, 
um, it just had a gamut of things for me. But my story turned into, to me, my school story turned into, eventually it became a situation where I could not work at school. I had went back to school at 40 and um, was gonna become a, a, an ESE teacher. And it just became apparent that Philip's needs were best suited with me homeschooling teaching him. And once I got through being a little bit sad that I was letting go of a, of a teaching career, I realized that all of those years put together of working at a school district, working with those of TMH, which is just, you know, trainably mentally handicapped is what they had called it. You know, you're doing life skills. And then I knew what Philip could do that they couldn't do. So I gained so much knowledge. I worked with children that um, in a higher grade, fourth and fifth grade, that came from abusive families um, where I could help them self-calm. All of that in my, the way I believe, uh, and, and in my opinion, the Lord put me in all those places so that I could then be Philip's stay-at-home teacher. And I not only did I understand the classrooms, the timing, the you know ability to sit down and work with a special needs child, teaching school-related things, um, there were there were um, like different U YouTube places that I learned where to go where if I hadn't worked at the school district, I wouldn't have known that. I wouldn't know where to find that. So above and beyond anything, I, I wanted to do this to celebrate teachers and I wanted to do this to celebrate, you know, back to school, which is what this week was. Um, you know, I remember back to school being after Labor Day. So this is why I wanted to release Matilda Goes to School this week. And I just absolutely, I designed it so that there's one line of the floor of the school that if you wanted to, it would be so easy to personalize this for your teacher. Or if you wanted to have it for yourself because you were a teacher and put your school in that you worked for. Because I remember my elementary school, um, we looked at, I couldn't remember it for, for the life of me when my sister was here last. I'm like, what the heck? I couldn't remember my elementary school name. Not not Clarkston Elementary where I first went to kindergarten, but there was a chunk in Waterford. Um, anyways, I went to Cooley Elementary and it had escaped me and I thought, well, how cool would that be to, to put here? Um, whatever you want it to be it, or, or your teaching career, your start and your finish because I think that's cool. There, there's a gamut that I thought that we as stitchers could do, whether you have a son or a daughter who's a teacher um, I thought it would be really cute finished as a door hanger, but since mine wasn't going to be, I didn't finish it that way, but I thought this would be so cute as a door hanger um, on their door or on, they could hang it inside the classroom. I finished it in the back with this old vintage schoolhouse fabric. So you've got your flashcards. Um, you've got a little girl over here. Teacher reading, recess, the clock. Anyways, and I just used the measuring tape ribbon because how convenient that sewing measuring tape ribbon works with school, right? So you already got that probably. And then I had found these little charms uh, that were, sco were school. It's like a ruler and a notebook. And I need to add my 2022. But so this is Matilda Goes to School and this is the story behind the design. And I just, you know, I, I give thanks for so many of the teachers in my kids' path. I, uh, one, Olivia had a teacher from kindergarten that looped into first grade. I never knew what that was. And basically a loop is when a teacher goes from teaching one grade to teaching the very next grade, and they were giving it a try, um, I believe one of the first times in our school, and Olivia, went with her kindergarten teacher right into first grade. Now let me tell you about the consistency of the same teacher. She was comfortable. She wasn't nervous on her first day. She was excited to get back to her. 
These are all things I learned being in that field. Um, and so this is, this is my way of, of celebrating that career anyway. So I hope you like Matilda Goes to School. Um, I love her glasses. Absolutely love her glasses. And um, I hope you love her too. So you can get her. She's in the Etsy shop. And then I had one piece of haul that I have more to show you, but I saw this come out from Salt and Pepper. Um, her name is Emily Call, Salt and Pepper Stitcher on Etsy. And I shared with you before a cute little pattern she had of two witches. This is a new one that came out, and I believe it was just this week. Spooky Little Friends. So this is part of my haul, but this is Spooky Little Friends. And I quickly called up Jennifer, Sweet Cast Stitcher, and asked her. Um, she was looking because she had found the dollar spot um, box. I'll show you in two seconds. She wanted to find um, a vampire. And I'm like, hey, I just saw this. So what if we grabbed it? I shared it with her. I'm like, what if we grabbed it? And I want some smalls too. So anyways, that's what we did. And that's what we started Thursday night. And I think a Thursday night I stitched three. Um, so I have stitched Miss, Miss, well, it's a girl, so Miss Boney, the ghost and the vampire. And I will share those. And then I fully finished them. And we were going to start, we were going to start our strawberry, um, our very scary Erica Michaels. And I'm like, oh, I just really, we were ready, but not quite ready. And I'm like, let's just, let's just finish what we started. So let me show you what I have. Let me tell you, they were so fun. So fun. Okay. Let's see if I can do this. this. Okay, so this is what I created. This was the dollar spot thing. So this was five bucks. And it's this little haunted, whoopsie, little haunted house. And I prop him down here. But let me get it over here so you can see. I'm gonna. Whoa. Okay, let me pull them out first. So I can share each one. Okay. This is your dollar spot stuff. I got this and I got these two little glitter potion bottle things. So I got an orange and a purple and then this is a, a house. I don't know why I'm having a hard time. Did I bump this? Um, and these flicker. So it adds a little light in there because if you don't, I just feel like it, it helps it you know, helps things show up a little bit at, at night, especially the stitches. And there's a little glow in the house because it's deep. It's really deep in there. Okay, so now I will show you the stitches. The first one I did is this one. There you go. So she's got a little candy corn. She's got a little heart. And then I just used some ribbon, a little skeleton ribbon. This is that Too Cute to Spook. Fat Quarter Shop has that. I have a charm pack. Um, and this one I did use an a, a orange button and I did make this an actual like ornament. I have a small Halloween tree, but eventually I would like to get a, a real black six foot Halloween tree skinny for in that kitchen window right there and do like I did at Christmas time, but I just don't have enough to, um, to, to do that. There's no reason. So I'm gonna start with these and that gave me a perfect little house to still display them. So this is my first one. And then I stitched this one. These are so tiny. Then I stitched this sweetness. This is her ghost. And I use a little orange pom-pom trim, polka dot, gingham ribbon. I felt like that space in here was dead, dead space. And just something was bothering me because she, she sloped like a ghost, but I felt like the space was too much dead space. So I put my ribbon here instead of dead center. And then I have to put, I have a Halloween charm that I want to put on here of a skeleton, of, of a ghost. So I just did snip this one and stuffed it and put that checked. And then I'm going to put something right there. So that's her. 
And then this is my vampire. So he's got a little spider ribbon, the same polka dot, spider fabric on the back. Now I stitched all of these on murky. I have one little package of murky. And ever since watching Made by Michelle McGraw, my finishing queen, um, she obviously everybody knows she ha she just uses Marky for everything, and it always looks good whether it's Christmas or Prairie School or, or Halloween. Um, but one day I picked up a 14 count Ada Marky that she seemed to show that it was so soft, and it is. Oh my gosh, um, I'm. I'm not really an Ada stitcher. I stitch on even weave or linen, um, and, and usually it's 28, 32 count. Um, 32 seems to be my thing, but this was really enjoyable. This murky and, and the fact that it was 14 count Ada was so enjoyable. So these are my three little dudes, and right now they live in that house, and I, I love them. So my plan is, put those down there, my plan is that I still would like to stitch um, the witch and the pumpkin guy for sure. Um, I mean, I'd still like to do Frankenstein, but these are on my goal for, for this week. Um, and I'm gonna change her up a little bit to, to I'm gonna change her hair color. And I'll probably use the green I use for um, Beulah. So this is the floss I pulled it from. All I did was to make it easy, was I did my Beulah's palette because it's becoming, it's becoming like all my favorite Halloween colors. So I didn't follow what she had, I just made it easy on myself. Um, so I used that and then this is the actual murky, picture this plus murky that I got from Brick City. So they are so fun. I was just gonna say I was gonna grab one but you can't quite when it was the white what I did was um, I don't have a big big piece of it so I knew it was gonna be perfect for this what I did was I picked for the for the ghost and the skeleton because they're white I picked chunks where it was real dark so I would get that white to pop off and I used the B5200 on that so Anyways, this was just a fun diversion. Um, certainly wasn't for Sampler September. I will share with you what I've been working on with that, but I have to say uh, Halloween stitching is so much fun. And um, if, if you, you know, were interested, give, you know, give salt and pepper um, a follow and check out her Etsy shop because these are, these are too cute to spook kind of deals. And I love that. So, also, at the dollar spot, I found these, and I've never used them before, but they have these little, these were a buck, so well worth it if, they, if I don't care for them, no matter, but it was these wooden little uh, uh, embellishments that you could use that you see that everybody using in their finishes. So I got the cat one, and I got the witch hat. Now what I like about them is they're painted on one side, but not on the other, so I can repaint, make them what I want, fill the hole if I want to. Um, you could put a button over that hole and they give you the type. So again, it would be okay on a Halloween tree, but a Halloween tree is black. You wouldn't see them. But I thought how cute on um, my Beulah and Greta, I use that barn wood frame. I thought that might be cute one day even to just glue up in the corner. So I did grab these uh, as part of my haul and for finishing so that was it was it was fun it was a fun day uh, at Target okay so let's see here I think I don't have very much haul besides what you saw at Target spot and my ribbon thing which I'll share in a picture but I did get I ordered everything that you needed from Country Stitches Online for Brenda Jer's vase, a witch in her garden, and that did arrive. So basically, I have this pattern, and I really, 
we, we, I know we need to get going on this for sure. And it came with the backing or the top, I'm so sorry, and the pumpkin stalk. And then this as your, um, where the stand. So right now I'm just keeping it in the box. I was excited to have it. Um, and now I'll get it in, in, a, in a bag or something like that ready, ready to go. Okay, so plans. Plans and then I'll do whips. Basically my plans are Erica Michaels, there we go, sorry, Scary Berry, starting it this week, one of them. And then I think it's gonna look so cute with the other little characters, cause check it out. I mean, how cute if they were in a, a you know, something together. So for right now, she'll get propped up um, by the house. I did buy this, hold on one second here. This was at the Target dollar spot as well, unpainted, same price, the five. And so it's a coffin like, instead of the haunted house fashion. So I'm not sure if it'll get used this year, but I did I did grab one of these and I thought how, how cute. Originally, <laughs> originally I bought it to lay flat and I thought I would put her stitches in here, but you'd never see them. I, I didn't realize how tiny they were, they were gonna turn out, um, which is great, but it, it needs to be a bigger, a bigger stitch for that. So um, again, they just had some really fun, fun stuff. So this will be what I stitched this week. I have two pieces. The dark that I'm going to use is a uh, Nocturne. I have Nocturne. It's going to be bigger than what the model is because the model calls for 36 and this is 28. So it's going to be a bigger one for sure. And then I did get for the lighter one, which is this one, I did get 36 count Edinburgh Gray Magic. That's that. So these are the two blues that I have. One dark, one light. See, yeah. So all I have to do is get the threads and I will get them when I'm at Brick City uh, this week because there are a few dye floss with that. So I've got to go ahead and finish kitting it up and then I'm going to have my very first strawberry that I made. Very first one. Um, that. I also, for Sampler September, I primarily worked on my Haunted House Sampler sale. I'll show you my progress in just a minute. But I do want to do a reproduction and I, I was going to get a new start on my Brenda Keys Sampler, the Sampler Company. And I just really would have some more finishes before I start something big. So I made a executive decision if you want to say and I am going to do I shared it with you last week I believe I'm going to do Mabel Lee this was uh, Chessie and me it's just a nice red work it's got two colors hold on one second I'll pull it out this time it's got a red and like a like a tan uh, slightly green but I got this on eBay and I have everything so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do something small red work. So I am going to stitch that. It's really cute. Um, 10, Mabel Lee, age 10 years, 18, 1889 or 1869? Oh, that doesn't matter. I think it's 1889 actually, yeah. So. Um, yeah, th I, that, that was my executive decision to not start something really big. Um, and I'm in the mood for good red work, so this, this fits that. So I'm, I'm excited about that kind of a start. And then I'll share with you, because I did some good stuff, some good stitching. Um, that's plans. Okay, so Wednesday night, here's my whips. Wednesday night, stitching the dads. I have been working on... Lizzie Kate, 2007 special edition. I started it up at StitchCon. Um, and last time I had started the house, finished these two. So now I am, excuse the wrinkles, but uh, let's see if I can. Okay. 
I brought my border, this little border around more, coming up the side. I finished down here with the house, and I've started my next ho ho ho. So I'm on my second ho, and I about the time at my dad's house is usually about four hours so pretty much I'll get that finished and hopefully a start on the next block which is this one right here the Christmas sack uh, your Christmas tree package and I believe that that's a poinsettia but either way so I've, I think I think um, if I keep my Wednesdays for Lizzie Cates or prairie schoolers which are simple palettes I will get, I will sit that'll be like I'll get quite a bit finished um, so that's that and I like I really really like this one so much I was not sure about the upper block before but it's growing on me and I'm I'm seeing what it is a little better now these were real clear but um, so I'm, I'm excited I'm excited for that one it'll be the biggest Lizzie Kate I've, I've done so that's that um, and that was a kit as well on, on eBay that I was able to get and it came with the, the fabric and the floss. So that's a fun way to go. Hold on one second here. That's why it's not surged up or anything like that. So that was Wednesday night stitching. Then I wanted to share, I stitched two nights on a gingerbread grove. And I know I shared that with you before, but this is Glendon Place gingerbread grove. And I spent two nights working on this. Uh, I really, I'm really liking this and I'm really having a good time with it. And if, I'm always gonna say, no matter what my plans are, you just should stitch what you wanna stitch. Um, and so here I am, and I did quite a bit of work on this house here. I filled in the windows, filled in the, the houses, started my little walk here, so. And I've got the front door on. Now this roof, whoo, that roof is something. Um, it is all different colors here, but so pretty. So I think um, I'm just gonna keep coming back and forth and working on this little path until I get it done. Um, and I would love to connect when I get this other side of the door done, connect over here and start getting a little bit of the bones of this house done. Um, I got to come back and do a deer and a deer, but I feel like with how much I love this piece and working on it, I feel like, and that I'm not doing the crinic or the beads. If I do beads, it'll be very little. Um, I feel like I could have a finish out of this and that's a big piece. So I am going to go ahead and keep it out for me right now, even though it's not a sampler or anything like that while the mood strikes, you know, that you do. So these are, um, this is my great floss bling from As The Yo Flies, Chris. She has an Etsy shop, As The Yo Flies. And then these are all the colors. And um, so anyways, I would, I would, I would love to see this on my wall for this year, but we shall see. Um, so, okay. That was that. All right, and then I worked on the next, the next nights I did the, the Emily call stitching, and then I worked two nights on Haunted House Sampler Sale, the Twin Peak Primitives Haunted House. And again, I'm starting to get this feeling. Now this did fall into my sampler stitching for September. This is an original sampler. Um, and I, I'm moving along and I'm kind of feeling the same thing that if I really focused on this sampler versus worrying about the others, I might get a finish out of it. Then I think I'd feel really good about, you know, the Brenda Keys. But this is where I'm at. Um, I finished the word Halloween here. I put this in here. I got a few more letters of the alphabet. I brought my border down here and I'm almost ready to turn under it. So I'm getting the bones of that in. 
um, I came up here and I'm getting the second story some of that you know outline going so I can fill in so last night I filled in right there and I'm over here um, so let me show you the actual cover page this was a kit it was their limited edition kit they do have it um, they did release it let me show it to you um, but I got mine as as a kit so I am working, I'm hoping to get these windows outlined and, and move up here. And then because I've, I'm coming around, I'm also going to finish the alphabet up top here. So that's kind of my goal. My goal this week would be finish the alphabet, finish this little thing because I have this half started. Come down here make, and finish this alphabet and then get another one in. Um, and then as long as I keep plugging away at the house and the border, I really, really feel like there's going to be a finish on this in September or early October. So I'm excited to get this next ghost. Um, but he's, he's in that next window, but you can see I'm like halfway over here like that. I don't have very much to go. Um, and it, it's all DMC floss except for... I swapped it out for fragrant clothes uh, for the vining on the border. I know that doesn't look so good, but that's what it is. And I don't think I shared the fabric with you last time. This I'm stitching on. I, this did not come with the kit. I, I wanted to have something icky, kind of an icky green. So this is Grasshopper, 32 count Belfast Grasshopper. So I absolutely love, whoopsie, how it looks on that green. So that, that was pretty fun. That was pretty fun, especially I've been in the mood to stitch, stitch all the holiday stuff. Um, so, and a red work. So I think this week that's kind of, I'm gonna just stick with the, the ones you've just seen. Um, I do have, one start that I would like to start this week and that is just um, one of my designs and it's another Christmas one and it is called Family Portrait. So I will leave it at that. I gotta share this bag with you though. I got this uh, from Jennifer Cricklewood Crossing and um, I think I may have shared it one other time but this Santa, I love him. I love him so much. What a sweet Santa. Uh, so this is just a great bag. And uh, I think that might be why I want to start the project <laughs> so much is so I can use this bag. Um, but it's called Family Portrait. And it'll be my first Santa in green. And I'm kind of doing that because uh, a good friend of mine, Chris Leedy, mentioned to me that her favorite Santas is a girl were Santa's wearing a green jacket. And I've never really thought about that before. So this one stems around, this design stems around, I don't see it as often uh, we, because everybody has their camera phones and they have all these other things. But when I was a girl, um, we always, a lot of times we would go take Christmas pictures or when I had the, my, my kids were young, we always made the appointments at J.C. Penney or Sears Photo, and you would dress them up in their velvet and their little black patent leather shoes, and you would go get your Christmas pictures of your kids, and then that's what you gave to your parents, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and now we just do so much with our own phones, but I feel like there's something a little bit lost. I remember one year t deciding I was going to take Heather, Philip, and Olivia in their pajamas to the Sears photography and get their Christmas pictures taken. So they went in their pajamas and all this matching stuff. I was so excited. And Sears, and we're, of course we're in Florida, and Sears lost their air conditioning. Now, of course, if you wanted your Christmas pictures, you had to have this stuff done in September, October, so that they were back in time to get them mailed out or all that jazz or buy your frames. Okay, it was so hot. I mean, I had these kids in footy pajamas that they were just little sweat balls. Um, 
so anyways still fun story for me it's done and over with but I'll never forget it I mean there's a picture where Phillips and his pajamas he's coming out of Santa's out of like a chimney um, so this kind of revolves around that thought process of getting dressed up putting on your the velvet and the black velvet and the pant leather shoes and just having that that special picture that you know you, you take uh, for Christmas and um, anyways so I'm hoping to get a start on that okay the giveaway I have from Fat Quarter Shop for this week I just want you to use the word planner you need to be 18 years old or over most of you know the drill so because I'm gonna have to ask for your age all you need to do is use the words word planner and if you want to use it in a sense you can you don't have to all you have to do then is is um, email me if you are the winner and now that's for this week's winners obviously you're gonna to have to wait till I announce the winner of this one but the keyword this week is planner and then I'm gonna list who the winner is of last week's and all you have to do is email me at finallyafarmgirl at gmail.com you can message me through Instagram you can message me through Facebook um, and just let me know but this week's giveaway is special for the 60th floss tube episode and this is the Lori Holt be in my bonnet planner for 2023 I shared the 2022 planner which was in this cool aqua blue and this year it is in pink precious pink anyway so I did open it just to show this but what you end up with is it comes in this beautiful box I mean they just fat quarter shop doesn't do anything not not high-end so it comes in this real pretty box and then it has I've shared this before these really I mean look at these pretty colored tabs by the month and I had shared at the beginning of last year how I was using it to track my water my health my weight loss which by the way starting to do a little better now thank goodness um, got off some soda I have a I'll show it to you next time when I drink but it's like a soda soda stream my daughter got it for me last year and I hadn't found a flavor I liked but I finally did and so diet ginger ale so I'm basically drinking so much more water and not not my my diet coke so anyways that got sidetracked I do that you have all your months at the beginning of the month you I love this here too you have this daily area to write down whatever you want so at the beginning of each month you have your month and still a note section and then you go through the week by day with much more room and it's just a really good size as far as for carrying um, to retreats and things like that and then at the very end there's a, a nice section for notes at the end so I think this is a really great thing to take with you to retreats and I think one of the biggest things I liked this year that I saw at StitchCon and now carrying through over is having your stitchers at these retreats that we are friends with uh, through Instagram and are getting to you know you're finally meeting that person in in person um, that you can have them put their information in there um, they can sign something on the day that you're at the retreat either way I think it's a great thing to take with you um, so you don't for forget because you always get home from that and you're like oh I wish I had ever gotten her number or or anything in addition to that from fat quarter shop I saved this because I think this is a beautiful book and it's called Scrappiness is Happiness and it's 32 scrappy quilts to fill your house with love. Okay, that's that right there that just has me at the words, um, if you know me. So this is the book. It is so nice and I thought how cool if I gave these away uh, together. I keep getting in the shadow and it's the books look dark, but this is what it looks like. I, like seriously it's gorgeous um just love this book so much 
So it's got Lori's quilting tips. It has sewing scrappy with Laura, one block wonders, just add sashing. It's just got tons. And the photography in these books is phenomenal. I, I mean, I love everything about Lori Holt. I don't know that I'd ever be able to, to keep up, uh, but wow. So gotta admit, a hard one to kind of give away because I could look at this, these, even if I don't quilt, I could look at these pictures uh, all day. Anyways, so this is to help celebrate 60 Floss Tubes. I cannot thank you enough for supporting me. As soon as I reach 8,000 subscribers, uh, I think we're at 7,600. As soon as I reach 8,000, I kept that whole box and I am just, I am thrilled to get that, get that out to a, to a winner and celebrate that milestone with you. Um, okay, I think I shared everything on the table. I'm sorry I blocked the dog. She is sleeping in the chair like last time. Um, you know, I wish you guys a great, happy, healthy, blessed week and um, a lot of good stitchy time. And um, anyways, love you guys and don't forget to floss. Bye.